What up, everybody? Cartes here. I have my guest here, Miss Clover. Um, this is Haley's friend. Um, she spent the night last night, and we've been spending some time just chit chatting and, you know, asking a lot of questions about um, her travels around the world and living her experience living here. And uh, she's 17 years old and is about and has been investigating. Uh, college options and whatnot. So, you know, we decided to hop on and chit chat a little bit, um, kind of pick her brain and talk to her about some things. And uh, so, welcome, Miss Clover. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. Good. It's how good. are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, how Merida? So, where are you from? I'm originally from Edmonton, Alberta, which is in the west of Canada. It's it's the province inland from. British Columbia. Okay. BC, okay. Vancouver. Cool. Cool. Now, I know there's a lot of, there's a big Canadian population here. Mm -hmm. um, have you met a lot of other Canadians since, since been here? Not a ton. I'm not super active in the like foreigner community. Okay. So okay. I'm not like, not, not particularly. I met a, a handful. I oh. met a few. Okay, okay. So what do you what what has your experience been like since been in Medida? At 17, have you found it hard and difficult to make friends and and I think how long did you say you were here? I moved here when I was 14. Okay. So okay. I've been here for about 3 years. So what has your transition been like? Just meeting new people, making friends with locals and um hard I think would be like the the word I would use. I I originally moved when I was fourteen, and I didn't want to move. Uh huh. I was like not inclined to move at all, and then it was like I just I I think I literally used to say to people verbatim that I was taken from my home and placed <laughs> in this country. I think that's literally what I used to say. Wow. So what was so you say hard? What was what was hard? Everything was hard. I. I had like friends back home. Okay. I had, I think at one point I had like a little boyfriend when uh -oh, I was like 13 or uh -oh, something. Uh oh, uh oh. And yeah, I was just, I was just really lonely, I think, for the first like year, or even two years. Mm hmm. And then, and I didn't speak the language, and I didn't understand the culture. And we moved, we initially moved to Telchak. Telchak, okay. Which is like, okay. yeah, it's like yeah. a little, little tiny town. Yeah, yeah. And there's not that much youth there at all. Really? Let alone like anyone who speaks English. So it was very unpleasant. Oh for me. my goodness! We were uh, like on the beach doing nothing for a few years. Uh huh. Yeah. And that place, I've been out there. That it's kind of out there to itself. And so you say there's not a lot of stuff to do. It's just yeah. boom. Everybody speaks Spanish and wow. Uh, but now your Spanish is so good. Looking back, do you feel uh, being in those areas helped with your Spanish a lot? Not really. I wasn't I wasn't interacting with anyone okay, for like a okay. really long time. And then I started taking Spanish lessons mm -hmm. um, like a year after. I thought that we were going to move back, okay. actually. So I was like, let's just like s wait it out. <laughs> and then a year in, we, I don't know, I guess I realized that my parents, uh, uh, they forgot to clue me in or something, but I, I realized I wasn't moving back. Wow. Wow. Or they told me or something, and I started learning Spanish, mm -hmm. and it was honestly horrible. I didn't have like an interest in languages. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in it. I didn't like it. I didn't want to be here, and yeah, it was so, really bad. So what changed? At what point did you say, okay, I'm gonna? Because you love it here now. What changed? Um, I don't know. I think the main difference was like making friends okay. who are from here who okay. are able to explain to me different things about the culture ah. and like explicitly tell me like we do this because mm -hmm. you know and like help me with my spanish and things like that and also like once you remove the language barrier a uh -huh. lot of it becomes a lot easier okay you know? okay and even like you say that my spanish is good i was telling Haley. Because Haley also made the same comment to me, uh -huh. but Haley's seen me interact with my friends, and I still have like a lot of problems. Okay, okay. In my Spanish, even though I do speak Spanish now and I'm conversational in it, I think, yeah, I th I'm not like fluent, but I'm conversational, and I think um, the majority of my friends are bilingual. Okay. 
and so I think just being able to like meet people my age who like understood what I, I was going through mm. and were able to explain to me now, things. your friends who are bilingual, <laughs> um, their English, how good is their English? Would you compare their English as their second language as good as your Spanish as yeah. your second language? A lot of their English is a lot better than my Spanish. Really? Yes. Uh, it's because in Mexico, I found this out actually. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, you write a test at some point in school, mm -hmm. and then they they mark you in your English as either like advanced or okay. beginner, and that's basically you basically stay that way for your entire like high school education. Wow. Which wow. whatever your opinion on that is, you know whatever. But um, yeah, so my my friends who are bilingual, mm -hmm. they were all in advanced English, ah, and so they okay. were taking advanced English classes, and like a really good friend of mine. Her English is at C1, if you know what that mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. Which is significantly higher than my Spanish. Mm -hmm. My Spanish is in between B1 and B2. Oh, B1, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed with your Spanish. I'm, you know, we were out today, we were out eating lunch at a restaurant. <coughs> the waiter and waitresses were coming by, talking to us, of course, in Spanish. And But you got all of that, and you were conversating back and forth with them very, very well. Thank you. Well, that's because your comprehension mm -hmm. develops faster than your ability to speak. Mm. And like lots of people that I know, even here, um, lots of people watch like English television yes. here. And so they'll be able to understand basically like like 50, even like 90% of what you're saying, mm -hmm. but they can't speak it to you back. Ah, okay. It's really interesting actually. It is. I, I, I do find myself understanding more, of course, when other people speak, I understand more. Or I might understand 60% of what they're saying and making out the rest. It's also because when you're in immersion, I well, what I think is that when you're in immersion, you build vocabulary faster than your grammar. Okay. So That's true. For example, Haley told me that she understands a lot, mm -hmm. but she can't like formulate sentences yes. and it's because she hasn't studied grammar whereas she has vocabulary but she can't string it together mm. because she doesn't know her like tenses and stuff okay and i was okay. the same way where i my comprehension i understood what was going on for like maybe a year before i was able to speak uh, it was very frustrating I could, yeah I, i'm at that stage now where it is it's, it's, it's extremely frustrating <laughs> Um, like you say, you can understand what people are saying or make out what they're saying, but as soon as you try and form the words to communicate back, that's where the disconnect happened, at least for me. Yeah. And uh, so you say um, that transition happened when you started making friends and they started teaching you about some of the reasons why they do certain things here. Mm -hmm. um, did that happen? Near, at the tail end while y'all were in tail chalk or did y'all move somewhere else when you started forming those relationships? That was, that was last year. Okay. Um, we moved to Merida last year. Uh-huh. And that was when I started being able to communicate with people more. I also took a course here. Okay. I was in a weekend course for a year. Mm -hmm. And oh, I was wow. studying um, like aesthetics and design mm -hmm. and like nails and makeup and stuff. Uh -huh. And so I was being exposed like every week to mm. banter and just like very casual conversation. Would you say that helped a lot? I do, but I think that there's a lot of like misunderstanding about mm. immersion. Okay. Lots of people think that you can just move to another country and you'll learn the language like that. Yeah. And it's not, that's not how it works. Mm. If you're not putting yourself in those situations, you will not learn Spanish. You will not learn the language at all. Wow. And I'd argue that even if you are in those situations and you're not studying grammar, you're only picking up vocabulary. So the grammar is very important. It is very important. Uh, Spanish has, I think it's like 16 tenses or something. Okay. That's probably the wrong number. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it has a lot of tenses and a lot of grammatical stuff in it, like a lot. You have to study grammar. I mean, I think that you can have a natural talent for okay. languages uh -huh. in the same way that someone can have a natural talent for music. Okay. And they can pick it up really fast. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that those people are like special. You're you special. Know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I look at you as special. <laughs> yes. And your brother, he seems to have this love, uh, this, this love relationship with languages as well. Oh, yeah. My brother loves languages. <laughs> I can never. 
So what are some of those things? I know you, a moment ago you said some locals shared some things with you about why they do things or how they do it or the reasoning behind it. Any of them, any of those reasons or the things stand out? Mm, nothing like stands out in particular. It was just, <clears throat> it's just like cultural differences. Like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, for example. Okay. Okay. Something that, that I, yeah. Um, people here have a lot like thicker skin than in Canada. Okay. Canada is very woke. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and so for a while when I was here, I was really offended at certain things. Okay. Honestly, uh -huh. being totally honest. And then I loosened up once I realized that people here just have tougher skin. They just don't, don't take things personally like that. Okay, okay. Generally speaking. Uh huh. Um, it's hard for me to talk about like cultural differences because when you're a foreigner in. Okay. I think that most people don't realize how much of their personality, how much of the way that they view the world is their culture okay. until they're put in a different cultural setting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I moved here, it was like all I could think about. And I still notice it all the time. I notice like cultural differences and things throughout my day that are like, oh, mm -hmm. that's different, that's different, that's different. But it's important to kind of stop myself from doing that mm -hmm. because it'll just kind of drive you nuts. Yeah, yeah, that it will. What some of the things you might have you mentioned, some things you, you felt you, you were offended by. What, do you mind sharing some of those things? Oh, yeah. Um, for example, I've had some comments towards me because I'm Asian. Mm -hmm. And I originally was like, oh, that's like really ignorant and racist. Yeah. Right? But honestly, when I really thought about it, it's really homogeneous here. Mm -hmm. in terms of ethnicities and, and nationalities and stuff, okay. right? There's no diversity here. And so where would those people learn That's true. how to inclusivity from Okay. when there's okay. no one to be inclusive to? A good point. You know? And so it made me realize that it wasn't racism. It was just ignorance. Uh -huh. And it allowed me to let go of it a bit more. Okay, okay. Even though sometimes I do get comments and they still bother me, uh -huh. but they bother me a lot less now. Ah, uh, you got another one? I probably do, but I can't think of it on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know with some of the, you know, and just going back to cultural norms here, um, and this happens all the time, but I, I, it happened to me last night. We was in the store and the lady just, walk squeeze through me and you bumped into me and you kept walking and didn't say excuse me and in states you know it's like oh folks are ready to fight was mighty bump into you and, and don't say excuse but me or something i don't think that that's a cultural difference i think that that was just like a rude lady really because yes. it happens all the time to me it and happens it, in new york too mm, well i haven't been in new york but i know in colombia south america it happened everywhere we went mm. but the po you know, I, so I asked some locals. Yeah. I'm like, man, these folk keep bumping into me. They don't say excuse me. They's like, oh well, we, we don't say excuse me here because mm -hmm. it was it was an accident and everybody understood it to be an accident. So they'll bump into you or they'll reach in front of you to grab something off of the counter. And so here they say it, it's, it's not offensive. They're not offended by somebody reaching in front because they do that all the time, and it drives oh. me crazy. Well, I've gotten used to it now. Um, I'm trying to think of another one. <sighs> the bumping into me. Well, but I don't think that that is a cultural difference, though. And this is the, that's the important thing about learning a language and mm. being able to have people in your circle who you're able to ask about it. Okay. Because when you go into another country and you see someone doing something different, it's really easy to be like, oh, maybe it's a cultural thing. Okay. And so then you blame everything on the cultural thing. Uh -huh. And then, and I've seen this with a lot of people who move here, they start to build up resentment about all these little tiny things that happen. But in reality, it was probably just some rude person. Some rude person. You know? And I think it's important to be able to learn the language and ask people in your circle about if it actually was a cultural thing or not. Because I've done that too. I've, I've told like a friend of mine who is like Mexican, uh -huh. like, 
I had this really, I had this experience and I thought it was really rude and I think that it's a cultural thing. And they stare at me like I'm being the most ignorant, <laughs> horrible person on the planet. <laughs> They're like, you made, you really just assumed uh -huh. that we're rude and, and horrible. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, oh, sorry. Ah. Uh -huh. I forgot. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask around a little more on the bumping because I had several locals tell me that, um, that it, it is a thing and that they, don't take it personal. Um, well, same like they did in Colombia. Yeah, I'm no authority on like what uh, is and isn't cultural. Uh -huh. I'm just saying that that I'm not saying that that isn't a cultural thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's important when you make an observation to, yeah. to confirm that it is a cultural. I thing. do like that. I think that is great advice. That is that is good advice to do. Um, and y'all that are watching, I mean, you when you first get here, particularly if you haven't traveled outside the U.S. and this is your first time. Um, going into another country, there's going to be a lot of things that are different, you know. And so, like she say, as you start to build relationships with local folks, um, talk to them, ask, you know, before you just making an assumption, um, you know, and, 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 you know, again, just get feedback. I know we were talking previously, um, and I think you said at this three-year mark, and I might be wrong on the time frame, you're just finally feeling, starting to feel very comfortable, more relaxed. You're starting to get things more because of understanding language more and building more local relationships. Can you talk a little more to that? I mean, it still is hard sometimes. Spec like, I think the main thing for me mm -hmm. was that I had such an identity in like being Canadian, you know, uh -huh. especially because I don't want to say that my mom's patriotic on camera because uh -huh. she's gonna watch this. She's gonna be like, "Nah," -uh. <laughs> but I think she's a little patriotic, and so so was I a little bit, a little tiny bit. Uh -huh. And then I don't know. I was here in Mexico for like years or whatever, and then last year I took a trip to Canada by myself. Okay. And when I went there, I realized that I had like very little in common with a lot of the things that were a lot of the, the cultural expectations mm -hmm. in Canada and a lot of my friends' perspectives on the world. Mm -hmm. For example, I had this conversation with some people and they were talking about hypothetically what would happen if a minimum wage didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And one of the people was arguing for a free market and the other person was arguing um, that, I don't remember what they were arguing about, but I don't remember what their, their arguments were, but basically, <coughs> None of them brought in the fact that if that they think you they were um, privileged enough to even be put in a position where they are debating this topic. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because here in Mexico, the minimum wage isn't well regulated, and people still have to work because there's no free health care. And in Canada, um, and other things like that. And in Canada there's a lot of government funded things oh god so one of these people was saying oh well if people didn't feel like they were getting paid enough they would just stop working mm. in canada maybe yeah but here no true and true. i had to explicitly tell them that and that was one of the major like turning points for me mm -hmm. in terms of the way that I related to other Canadians mm -hmm. was the fact that a lot of Canadians don't recognize their privilege in being born in Canada. You know, just being born in a first world country automatically gives you so much privilege. Yeah. And especially like moving to Mexico, Canadians automatically have 12 times more than the average Mexican mm -hmm. because of the exchange rate. And with Americans, it's 20 times more. Wow. So you have 20 times more than the people who live here. And you are automatically, by moving here, exploiting the land, mm -hmm. no matter how you cut it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. But I'm not discouraging people from uh -huh. moving here. Uh -huh. I'm just saying that if you do choose to move here, you have to be really, really aware of that. Yeah, that is important. Very important. Um, I think I got derailed. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of shocked that you're just 17 years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, wow. I thought about this a lot. Wow, wow. Um, okay, so 
how do you enjoy so do you like living in Mexico what I do like living in Mexico <clears throat> I think there's definitely some trade-offs mm -hmm. to living in Mexico and I think that there's definitely a lot of adjustment mm -hmm. I do like it here okay but okay. I also am aware that I'm viewing it from a very privileged perspective mm -hmm. and even my perspective on Mexico is still small okay because I'm still in my circle yeah okay you know? okay now, I know you're finishing up high school um, and you're looking at college. Um, are you looking to go to college here in Mexico or college back in Canada? I'm actually not looking at going to college mm -hmm. right now. Okay. I'm in some uni I'm in a university course right now. Okay. Um, looking Mexican at university? No, it's um, Athabasca. Okay. It's a it's an online university. Okay. That. Um, it's Canadian, okay. but it's online. And anyway, <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a little... Oh, no, nah, you're fine, <coughs> you're fine. But, um, yeah, and I, I have a few different certificates. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm getting a few different certificates. I want to go into freelance writing. I had to look into um, matriculation. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit before about talking about, yeah. like, methods for graduation. Um, <coughs> I had to look into getting my matriculation. Mm -hmm. which is in Canada, basically the way that it works is that colleges and, and post-secondaries, universities and stuff, they don't look at whether or not you've graduated, they look at the courses that you've taken. Okay. So um, you have to get, like if you, if you know what you're going into mm -hmm. and you know what those course requirements are, mm -hmm. you just get those courses and then okay. you apply. Hmm. You don't have to go through this whole, all the paperwork and everything. Oh, cool. You can also get your GED in Canada, but they're changing it to a CAEC, mm -hmm. which is a Canadian Adult Education Certificate. You can also get your um, high school diploma through a homeschool board. Okay. What I would do is I would call different homeschool boards and mm -hmm. ask um, about whether or not it can graduate remotely. Mm -hmm. Probably would be a good thing to ask and look into. And yeah. Okay, okay. And if you're applying here, mm -hmm. oh no, go ahead. If you're applying here, you have to write an entry exam to the university you're applying to. Here, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, <coughs> from your research, um, in, in terms of going to school here, does it seem is it difficult, um, or would it be difficult based on what you've researched for a resident? who's moved here, um, a foreigner who's moved here um, and became a resident, is it difficult for them to get into college? Permanent residents have all the same rights and privileges as a, can, as a, a citizen, okay. <clears throat> but they can't vote. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, currently I'm on a temporary residency and I'm gonna get my permanent residency in February. Okay. But um, I currently am not allowed to talk or interact or participate or whatever you call it in any sort of politics. Mm, okay. I don't know if that changes with a permanent residency. I don't think it does, but I'd have to look it up. Okay. All right. All that right. might be something to look into. Yeah, yeah. If that's something that's important to you. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, what do you do for fun? For fun? Um, I like to box. I used to box. Really? Oh, okay. But I don't anymore. Uh -huh. I, when we were living in Telchak, I... I was at this boxing club, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of what we would call like machismo, like a lot of like misogyny. Okay. And it took a really long time for the guys to kind of like me. Uh huh. And then we moved here, and I tried going to another one, mm -hmm. and I just didn't like it. I had the same kind of thing where the guys were sort of rude to me, and I was just like, I told myself, I was like, I don't want to do this game. <laughs> so I weight train. Okay. All right. All I right. weight train, and I write poetry, mm -hmm. and I do vlogs. There you go. And yeah. Okay. I go out with my friends and things. I like board games. All right. So you drive, you got a license and you drive. How a lot a lot of adults <laughs> are intimidated about driving you. Oh here. yeah. What have been your experience? <clears throat> my parents fear monger me. Every time that I go out, they always <laughs> give me some horror story of the accident that they saw uh, the day before. Uh, I'm always a very careful driver. But um I think it's different for me because I learned how to drive here. Ah, so I can't ah, give any advice about the transition. I will say uh -huh. that the gringos here 
are so intimidated by the driving and they are they're like always talking about how terrible all the drivers here uh, are but when i'm on the road i can always tell who's not from here really i'm always like you're not from here you don't know what you're doing <laughs> well what what are, what are some of the telltale signs of that because <laughs> they don't know how to do the traffic circles Ah. They don't know the traffic circle laws. Ex explain the traffic because I'm sure I might be doing it wrong. Um, and I know when I first started driving around those circles or the roundabouts, everybody was honking at me. I, I figured it out, but it might be incorrect what I'm doing. Okay. Can you give a brief sum <laughs> summarize the, the proper rules for going around that thing? So it's a lot different than in Canada. In Canada, I believe you signal on the way in and you signal on the way out. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. But okay. Here, what you do is if you're going, oh my God, I need to like draw it out. They did it good because you know, it, like you say, it's different because you learned how to drive here, whereas everybody else come here with other ideas on how to drive. Okay. So these are your exits, right? Uh huh. <clears throat> this is where you are. So okay, wait. There's there's usually two, sometimes three lanes. Uh huh. You're here, you're trying to enter, okay? So somebody exits, you go in, uh -huh. and if <clears throat> you go in, if you're going to the right, uh -huh. you're going to signal to the right and go on the outside lane. Okay. If you're going anywhere else, you use the inside lane. Ah. Or if you're going on the, on, um, you can also take the outside lane if you're going straight and you don't signal on the way out. What you do instead is that if you're going, let me redo my circle. <laughs> if you're in your circle uh -huh. and you're going here, you signal to the right, okay? Okay. If you're going this way, uh -huh. you signal to the left, to right? The left. Like the way that the direction okay. that you're going into. Uh -huh. And when you exit, you turn off your signal. Ah. And you don't change lanes in the traffic circle. If you see someone doing that, they're at, in they're the, from out of town. They're in the wrong. They, yeah, they're not from here. <laughs> okay, I, I do unless change lanes inside the circle sometimes, <laughs> so I shouldn't be doing that. Try to avoid doing that unless you're merging on the peripherical. Okay. Like where I live, I have to take the peripherical to get into the city. Uh huh. And sometimes, on occasion, I'll get into the wrong lane and uh -huh. I'll, I'll have to change lanes. <laughs> but yeah, try not to do that. Let me ask you this. Um, oh, and also, go ahead. the very last thing: never get into a traffic circle if if there's a truck or a like a blue bus or any sort of bus or big car. I've seen though. Yeah. Just let them go first. Just let them. Okay. Just let them go first because you will get crushed. I've noticed that. I'm like, man, this <laughs> bus man, he's about, he's about to run, he's about to smash me in. I'm, I'm like. Okay, so let them just go, just <laughs> let them complete their, their thing around and, and, and then get in there. Exactly. Okay, all right. All right, so I know we come here with our, I'm not going to say we have bad habits about how we drive, but th th they just drive <laughs> different here from, from how we may drive. Yeah. Kim, I know she gets frustrated. They drive so slow, they just stop. They just don't, da, 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 da. Um, and another guy, local guy, he's like, well, driving is different here for us locals. We're just trying to survive the road trip. Is that anything, you heard anything like that from, 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 from your friends or anything? No. <laughs> to be honest, like my friends also think that the driving here is nuts. Okay. But they're like I. They're used to it. You just stay calm. I personally <laughs> think that you should always just stay really calm. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to be. <clears throat> it's just a lot more aggressive than it is in Canada. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. the roads are a lot more narrow, and El Centro is all one way. Uh huh. It's all one way streets. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, yeah. <laughs> you just have to learn. You just have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Mmm. Uh, was it difficult getting a license here? I failed my parallel parking three times. Did I tell oh, you that? Nah, uh, uh, uh. So they strict on that parallel parking, and, and it's in Georgia. They didn't <laughs> have to do it anymore. They just took it off the test. Yeah, there's a few different ways. I think there's, I think there's two ways. The, the one that I took, mm -hmm. I got my license, so I got my, 
I actually have a permit. Okay. You can't get your license here until you're 18, mm -hmm. but the only difference between a license and a permit is that a permit is for people who are under 18 and they have, um, their parents are taking accountability for their driving and they're okay. not allowed to drive past a certain time at night. Okay. Ah, so you can drive alone. Yeah. Without a parent. Yeah. With the permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can. So they're accountable for you. So if something happens, mm -hmm. they take full, <laughs> complete ownership as if they were driving. Yes. Wow. So, yeah. And wow. Yeah. Um, and then the license is like, it's just a license. And it's just like, okay. The way that I got my permit was through a school. So I went to a driving, I went to a driving school mm -hmm. and I took my, I took like two weeks of classes or something. I took my theoretical exam in okay. Spanish, and then I mm. took my, my, um, what's it called? Practical? Pra I took okay. my, my practical okay. exam. Uh -huh. So it was a parallel park, and um, they tested me on like my left hand turns, my right hand turns, and my traffic circles. Wow. But wow. you can also get it through the police station, like if you go to the police station, mm. and you can write your exam there if you need to take it in English. Oh, okay. So that is an option in English. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you can also, um, yeah, I don't know exactly how that works there, though. Um, I was told by someone that they only test you on the parallel park. Oh, the t okay. Like, they don't test you on your road skills, which... Mm, also, legit. my test didn't test me. They never taught me how to park in, like, a regular parking lot. I had to learn that after. It was really embarrassing. It was really, really bad. Uh, we say a regular parking lot, like, just you go into the mall and just yeah. pull into the parking lot. For, spot. like, a few months after I got my permit, uh -huh. I was parking, like, over the, the lines, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was really bad. And I still park, like, a foot away from the curb. And uh -huh. my friends all make fun of me. And I'm like, get a, get a different driver. I don't... You drive yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, all right, so you got, so a lot of firsts yeah. have happened here. Um, wow. So writing, you say you're looking at going to, into doing freelance writing. Uh -huh. And you like <laughs> writing poetry and stuff like that. Yeah. What do you, who you, do you, I know we talked briefly about this. Are you looking to write for other website owners, website content, or what, what type oh. of writing are you? Uh, I can't get my bank account information set up until I'm 18, or not 18, until I go back to Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to Canada in June. Okay. And I have to set up my bank account in person. That's just mm -hmm. how it works. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, but then I'll, I'll be freelance writing. I'm looking to, into writing, like, articles for websites and okay. newsletters and things along that line. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, so you'll be legit for working in around summertime roundabout, you say? I think so. I think so. Maybe. Okay. Okay. I um, yeah, I really would prefer to work freelance. I think that it's a, a good idea. <clears throat> I know I was talking about exploitation earlier. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it would be a good idea if I would be able to make dollars and yeah. bring them here to Mexico. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, <coughs> well, y'all listen. Y'all see how articulate she is. Very articulate. Um, you know, she'll be legitimate sometime in the summertime to to legally work and whatnot there's a lot of um americans and canadians that watch this channel okay. um many of them with websites so if y'all looking for somebody to do some writing for you you know make sure you reach out to her and um you know and she'll get some, get her experience in and y'all gonna get some good content and it's a win-win for everybody um any advice a lot of parents um, watch this. They have teenagers. Um, they want to make the move, but they're concerned about just snatching their kids up and leaving. Um, any advice or words of wisdom or anything um, for the teenagers or the parents to do to help make that move a little easier? Um, something I wish I did or I was something I wish my parents did was just have more like open communication with us okay. about the fact that we were moving. Mm -hmm. As I said, that like um, I actually didn't know that I was going to be living here permanently until a year in. Uh -huh. Please don't do that to your child. <laughs> that was really. <clears throat> I don't blame my parents for that. Uh -huh. I know that they were going through it. 
I know that they didn't have full clarity on if they yeah. wanted to stay or not, mm -hmm. but I just wish that they were a little bit more honest about, you know, this could be a permanent situation. Mm -hmm. I also think that you should definitely get a jump start on your Spanish as soon as possible. Okay. With more than just Duolingo. Uh -huh. Like, <clears throat> maybe enroll your kid in lessons or something, mm -hmm. like as soon as possible if you're considering moving here, you know? That's, um, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. yeah, I also... Um, yeah. Oh, good. I, I, I feel like I have more, but I don't really know on the spot. Uh huh. Encourage your kid to like make connections. Try to have a, a decent like curriculum mm. in terms of math specifically and like other other subjects that you have to build up. Mm -hmm. You know, like <clears throat> yeah. Try to to make sure that you're on your your schooling. Okay. As well. I know lots of people move here and they kind of fall off track. Mm -hmm. um, definitely look into ways for your kid to graduate from the state or, or province that you're from before you move. Okay. Because <clears throat> that's been like a mess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to figure out uh, my college and stuff. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. And potentially look into like vaccines and things that you might need here. Okay. and other things and um, look into the different types the different like the, the lifestyle that you want moving here I know lots of people move here and <clears throat> they get homesick really fast so then they start doing things like they go out like every other day mm -hmm. for like steak or like whatever and I totally get that because it is really hard yeah but if you're moving here and you're trying to maintain the lifestyle that you lived back home mm -hmm. You're wasting your money. Mm. Can you elaborate? Everything here that mm. is imported and is like American uh -huh. is also in American pricing. Okay. okay. So, you know, you're getting like, you're going out for steak and it's going to be significantly more for if you go out for tacos. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're doing that every day, then why did you move to Mexico? That's true. That's my question. <laughs> Be prepared to change your lifestyle. I like, like, don't that. just move to Mexico because you want to save money. Actually, make sure that you're ready to change your for your perspective mm -hmm. and your lifestyle. Okay. And um, what else? Yeah, look into like um, if you want to. I mean, just generally when you move, think about what type of transportation you want to take. If you want to take the bus. You want to take a rental. You want to take, you know, mm -hmm. like try to try to research that stuff before mm -hmm. because it might save you a lot of frustration. When you move, you're already kind of in a difficult time period anyway, yeah. especially your teenager. Mm -hmm. If you have a mm -hmm. teenager, you might want to <clears throat> try to resolve some of that stuff beforehand. Okay. You know, um, I guess that's it. I guess that's what. I oh, this is good stuff. I'm writing it down. Oh, and <laughs> and for the weather. Don't stay in air conditioning all day. If you want your body to acclimatize, you have to expose yourself to the heat. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. You have to just get used to it. I've heard somebody say that, and honestly, I hadn't gotten used to it, but I think I will <laughs> need to start work on working on that more. I have, I have heard others say the same exact thing. Their resistance. Yes, yes. Because uh, <laughs> I know once, one time our electric bill it was like 12,000 pesos. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And that's the thing is that people, people want to move to Mexico to save money. Uh -huh. There's a, a puppy dog at my feet, by the way. <laughs> people want to move to Mexico to save money, Yeah. but they're using all their money on air conditioning and steak and things that make them feel at home. I think mm. try to find ways to help your homesickness uh -huh. without going out and spending a lot of money. like. Mm, maybe even like maybe take up therapy maybe like try to get your advice. emotions you know try to get your emotional regulation in order because mm -hmm. you're not just uprooting your kid you're also upro uprooting who you are yeah like your life and if you're not prepared for that you're not going to be able to support your kid emotionally mm. and your kid is going to need emotional support wow you know that's deep that's, that's just my experience yeah but. yeah and that is solid gold this is solid gold, y'all. Thank you. So for those of y'all that are bringing your children, your teenagers here, man, listen, listen, 
re go back and watch this part again, um, you know, because she hit on a lot of stuff. And yesterday I was just talking about some of this stuff here in terms of budgeting and some of the decisions I made um, from when I first got here till now at almost the three year mark. I'm looking back and I'm like, you know what? I could have done a whole lot, a whole lot of things better and differently. Um, you know, because we did come here with a goal to save money, but I ended up spending more, spending more on this house, spending a lot going out to eat on the regular. Um, it's only in the last eight to 10 months have we started being more conscious of just going out and eating where the locals eat mm -hmm. and eating more of the local staple food um, versus the steak and or um, the fancy stuff, you know, in some of the other restaurants and other chains. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I think I will start trying to work on acclimating to this heat and not yeah. run my air conditioning as much because That's good. I got six more months, five more months left on this lease. And I don't think I want to spend as much on this house, on a house, yeah. um, which means I would have to get a house without solar panels. So I need to get used to this this environment. Try and sleeping in a hammock, you know, with a fan on. You know what? You know what? Now that you say that, I did sleep in a hammock once. Do you like it? I was freezing. I had to get a blanket. Exactly. And cover myself up with a blanket. Yeah. So that does work. <laughs> oh, also, one more thing about the homesickness. Uh -huh. I understand that there is a certain amount of balance to it. For example, my, um, I'm, I'm half Chinese, my mom is Chinese, mm -hmm. and it's been particularly hard for her in terms of feeling like she has a piece of her culture with her, Yeah, you know? And that's been really hard for her because all of the, the foods that she grew up with and mm -hmm. stuff, it's all suddenly completely gone Ooh. because there's no ethnic food here. Yeah. And so she spends a little bit of extra money on ingredients so that she can make the on important ingredients so that she can make her childhood foods at home and wow. that's something that's really important to her and that's something that she budgets for and so when you're looking at your budget you might have to think okay if this is something that's important to me mm -hmm. if this is something that's going to help me emotionally and that i can be consistent with then maybe it's worth investing in okay you know i like that but um it's just something to think about if the things that are important to you mm. in terms of what's going to help you regulate your homesickness okay y'all you know? make sure y'all taking these notes because <laughs> it's, it's the little details like that that makes your life in the transition here oh, uh, much smoother and easier so definitely definitely um any final words of wisdom have a nice day <laughs> have a nice day <laughs> i love it if they wanted to follow you on your YouTube or uh, how, how can they find you if you want them to find you? If not, I can cut this out. Um, it's called Clover's Journal. That's my like my vlog poetry channel. But um, we can maybe put the link in the yeah. description because it doesn't really pop up yet. I don't okay. have that many subscribers. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm going to put this in the description. Y'all click on that. I'll also post it in the comments section as well. Um, oh, I'm also going to start hosting a bilingual board games club, maybe ah, monthly. Ah, that sounds fun. Um, we could maybe put my like WhatsApp number yeah. down in my in the description okay. so that um, if somebody has a teen or a youth, whatever uh -huh. they're interested in sending my way. Okay, you know? I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so listen. She's giving y'all some tools, resources, and setting up a group for your teenagers to get out the house and, and learn and play some games and meet some other folks. So y'all reach out to her. Um, this has been informative and very enlightening. Thank you for taking the time um, to hang out with me today. Thank well, hang out with my daughter, but thank you for getting on this thing with me. And... Um, I have a feeling they're going to be asking for you to come back again. Anytime. So. <laughs> this was actually a lot of fun. I was kind of nervous. Uh, but yeah, this was fun.
Good, good, good. I, I yapper. Oh, nah, you, you, you did excellent. You did excellent. So thank y'all for watching. Move abroad and thrive.com. Make sure you hit us, uh, subscribe to her channel. I got the link in the description. Um, hit her up on WhatsApp to uh, connect to her group that she's going to be putting together. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.